Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the very first time it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jay, my husband Mike does everything behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money-saving life here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Sunday we share with you an aspect of our private life and today is about our thoughts and feelings and really getting quite personal. And today we're going to share with you four frugal living struggles. Number one, now normally people talk about heart versus head, but I'm going to talk about head versus heart. As a frugal couple, we make difficult decisions and they are all based on doing the right thing with our money, not just for today, but for our future and our long term future. And that means we have made in advance very much decisions with our head. And I'm going to give you some decisions that we've we've already made for our future. There's lots of things, of course, that we want, that we would like to do, that other people would call them dreams, maybe any of those things, that we've already said, in reality, thinking with our heads, not our hearts, these things are never, ever going to happen. They never were going to happen and they never will happen. I'm just gonna give you two, two examples. I love to watch people doing cruise reviews, but I am never, ever going to go on a cruise. Not because I don't want to, but because even when I worked, and even if I was still in my teaching career now, I would never have the income to save or live with at all to spend that kind of money on a week of self-indulgent. My head says no. Another piece of uh, indulgence would be, I see people who have caravans or mobile homes or camper vans or any of those things. And it, to me, that is a massive selfish indulgence and it's a liability and they depreciate in value and all those things. So the head always, always wins when it is about things and day trips and going to places and anything like that. As a frugal person, the head always, always wins. And sometimes that can leave you with feelings of, oh, if only, and it can leave you with feelings, oh, if only we earned more money, or if we had more money, or any of those things. But at the end of the day, whenever it comes to anything we want or need or like, or anything like that, it is always a case of heart overhead, the head always wins. frugal struggle, well it's definitely a struggle for me and maybe it's a struggle for you as a frugal person, it's all about time delays. Delaying purchases, delaying home renovations, delaying buying a new car, delaying buying clothes, delayed gratification in general. In a world where you see people who have things that they haven't finished paying for yet, whether that's a fancier car, fancier house, fancier lifestyles, fancier holidays. You, me, as frugal people, we are not those people. And it can feel like a struggle because sometimes you come across this sort of culture clash of other people having things here and now, not saving. And it, it can, if you allow it to, have an impact on you. So it can be a difficulty and it can be a struggle. I would say it's something that we master all of the time. And we live very rarely. We don't live where people have a lot of stuff. They don't have a lot of, they don't have a fancy lifestyle around us here. So we are most of the time really can't see what we're missing. But every now and then it is a struggle that there is a time delay of delayed gratification. As frugal people, and it might ring true with you, there's lots of things that we do as frugal people where we have to expect a degree of discomfort because we choose inconvenience. We choose inconvenience and to keep the money in the bank and to have money set aside to pay for our bills next month, next week, next year, and for work on our house maybe in the future, add future needs. So we save for those things. So in the meantime, we choose discomfort. So for example, 
you may choose and I might choose not to keep our houses at the temperature that other people do. So a couple of years ago when we had a massive heat wave and the temperature here was hitting 45 degrees every day, which is rare for Brittany, may I add, but it was and it did happen, perhaps two summers in a row, we had two very hot summers, no air con. This is not something that we would have that we wouldn't use or need. If I lived in Texas where it was hot, every single summer, I promise you it would be a financial priority. It is not somewhere like here because it is not hot every summer that hot all of the time. So we choose discomfort. In the winter time, it doesn't drop below. You know, it gets to about naught degrees centigrade. It might drop to maybe minus five degrees centigrade overnight, but it isn't freezing cold. I don't live in Norway. I don't live within the Arctic Circle. So I choose discomfort. So we have no central heating. We can't just flick a switch and have heating throughout the house. We heat one room. We heat either the kitchen in the morning or the living room in the evening. And the rest of the house is chilly. The rest of the house, like my sewing room, Mike's office, the bathrooms, for example, the bedroom in the daytime can, can drop down to 12 degrees, 12 degrees centigrade. The bathrooms can in particular. So we choose discomfort. We choose to do things like go out walking instead of having paid entertainment. It doesn't hurt us. In fact, we think it is character building. We think it's good for mind, body and soul. But we do that and it can be a struggle for some people, especially if you're adjusting to frugal living, is that you choose discomfort. The final frugal living challenge is that us as frugal people choose a different way of life. We know when we look out there, or we know statistically that it is proven. It is proven that most people do not have savings, whether that's Canada, the USA, the UK, across America, sorry, across Australia, lots of countries like that, people do not have savings. It is not the norm that people have savings. They, they might have investments or pensions, for example, but they don't have savings as a pot of money that they could just use, and they are using debt. Here in Europe, mainland Europe, not UK, mainland Europe, people are a little bit better at savings, but they saving, but they could be much better. But we as frugal people are the people who have savings. We have an emergency fund. We have sinking funds, short-term savings for one year, two year, three year, four year, five year projects. We have long-term savings for things that might come up in the future. We make different choices. And because of that, People can be judgmental, people can question us, and people can um, and look upon us as if we're kind of some kind of Scrooge, that we're not living a very good life, that we uh, outwardly appear uh, short of money, and people can make judgments of us. But those of us who have frugal living at the centre of our choices, it can be seen as other, as a frugal living struggle, that we live differently and anybody who lives differently will say that can be a struggle because there are people out there who will comment and criticize and don't like it that's their choice and we make ours but it can be definitely a frugal living struggle to live differently if any of those four frugal struggles resonated with you, drop a comment below. I'm sure it's not just me who feels like this, that these can be struggles more externally than internally, admittedly. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, we put out three frugal living videos every single week. We'll see you soon and bye for now.